since you already hate my guts, and as no one else around here is going to tell you until it's too damn late, here. Maxwell's conference. What am I meant to be looking at? The venue. I just left Sarah and Maxwell arguing in triage. I don't feel good about that. I can't think when you do that. Well, don't. Let me do the thinking. I need you here now. What is it? It's the electricity bill. It's $215. Yes, it is a bit steep. A bit? It's astronomical. Well, what have you been doing that's different? Hello? You moved in. Oh, you can't seriously be blaming me for this. It's all your girly hoojima what's it. I beg your pardon? Yeah, it's your curlers and your straighteners and your blow dryers. And you do stay in the shower for a very long time. And what about your iron and your steam press gadget? It's constantly on. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Anyhow, I haven't been here long enough. It's not me. Well, whatever. It's only going to get worse come winter. So I think we need to start advertising for another flatmate. I don't want to live with anyone else. No, we need to find a smaller place. A cosy little, well-insulated apartment. <laughs> Hello, you and me flat hunting? Good point. I think it would be prudent to wait until we know we've both got jobs before we make any moves. Oh, I hate being in limbo. Oh, I know. The stress is just playing havoc with my OCD. My hands, they're just they're cracked all the way down to the bone from all the hand washing. I know. I've just gnawed my nail down to an ugly, pudgy stump. I've been wondering if I should start sending my CV out just in case. I've been thinking the same thing. I wish Rachel McKenna would just hurry up and put us out of our misery. You don't have a list this morning, do you? No, I don't. I have a liver resection scheduled for 10. I was wondering if you'd like to assist. Of course, I'd love to. Good. Patient's in his 60s, hepatocellular carcinoma on his left lobe. I'm hoping we can remove it entirely. Any other underlying liver disease? No cirrhosis, no hep B or C. Liver's in pretty good nick otherwise, which is why I thought it'd be a good one for you to start on. You're going to let me do it? Under my close supervision, of course. Laparoscopic or laparotomy? Well, the tumour's a reasonable size, so we'll do an open resection. Great. I'll read up on the procedure now. I'm sure I can handle it. I'm sure you can too. I'll leave you two liaise with the patient and get his consent signed off. Done. Well, apparently he's got to get a biopsy to see if it's cancer or something. Meningiomas usually aren't, but you've got to be sure. Poor Reuben. Yeah, he's pretty shocked by that. Lauren too, I bet. Yeah, real worried. And the stupid play is two days away from opening. What's so. going to happen there? What well, Yvonne is taking over as director. I imagine she would be pretty good. Oh. Morning. Morning. Um, do you want to lift into work? I'm going to leave in about 30. I'm going now. I've got to go see Yvonne about something. OK, I'll see you there. Bye, then. Apparently, Yvonne is going to direct the play in Ruben's absence. So am I buying one ticket or two? Well, I imagine you want to go with someone you can trust, won't you? You're the one who lied to me about the location of the conference. Because I knew you would overreact. And I wasn't disappointed. I have every right to be concerned. You're an addict. You're the first to admit it. And of all the conferences out there, you chose Vegas. Because the subject matter interested me. All right? And I had no intention of gambling. Why put yourself at risk like that? Well, maybe to prove something to myself. Look, I, I know you mean well, but just get this straight, OK? I don't appreciate your misguided attempts to protect me. I better get moving. It's late. No, five more minutes. Oh, I better get in there. I don't feel that tension. That's because I'm getting ready to face Maxwell. Uh, if he's in a grump, just tell him to pull his head in. No, it's not that. It's that fight I had with Sarah. We started it. Stop it. We have been through this. You deserve that study leave. Any fallout between those two is of Maxwell's making and no one else's. Yes, but if he finds out that you blad... He can throw whatever accusations that he likes. I've done nothing wrong. It's not like I'm trying to destroy their relationship. I, of all people, want it to work. But that's not going to happen if it's all built on lies and duplicity, is it? So just relax. Let go of the guilt. I've actually done them a favour. Well, that's one way to look at it. That's the only way to look at it. They will sort it out. In the meantime, you need to concentrate on your exams. 
True. Now, do you feel I've clearly explained the risks and complications of the surgery, Mr. Cathy? Uh, yes, Barry. OK, so I'll get you to read the blurb here and sign there. Thank you. Excuse me, Dr. Worthington. Yes. Sorry for the interruption. Can I please borrow you for one small second? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, could you please sign off these insurance contracts? Sure. I know I shouldn't disturb you when you're with a patient. No, that's okay. Just Callum's keen to have these on his desk. No problem. Where do I sign? Here and here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. Uh, there you go. Thank you. All done. Sorry, where were we? What are you doing here? Well, oh, insurance. Are you finished consenting, Mr. Garthew? I need to put his IV lure in. Ah, uh, yes. Looking for this? Ah, uh, thank you. That's us. I'll see you in theatre, Mr. Cathy. Well. My turn now. Click, click there. Click there. Then you're done. You'll get it. This is a waste of your time, Daniel. Don't panic. Just follow my troubleshooting checklist. That's all you need to do. I'm sorry to put you to all this trouble for nothing. Just read it. You'll be fine. I'll give you a quiz later. All insurance contracts completed and collated as per Callum's request. And look at that. All before morning tea. Bully for you. Problem? Chris's seminar is this afternoon and I'm missing some information from one of the slides. Bring him. I can't. He's in theatre all morning. Help. Callum gave me explicit instructions not to get involved. Oh, come on, it's one little favour. I would, but I can't. I would do the same for you. Well, here, I can help. Oh, no, it's all right. No, it's beyond you, Mum. You. Oh, Callum, insurance contracts, all ready? I said by Friday, Libby. Ah, that's me, you know, Miss Efficiency. Miss Greasy. Much appreciated, Libby. Rachel, are you waiting for them to tear each other apart limb by limb? Of course not. I'm planning on then doing... Then make a decision, please. I, I plan to. Thank you. I just thought I'd let you know. I'll have a decision by the end of the day. Late end of day. I'm looking at the disease load now. I suggest you use a blunt blade, level two or level three. We're using the ultrasound probe to navigate the resection plane, are you? It's an undisputed requirement these days. It's ready to go. Thank you. Knowing there'll be significant blood loss, now would be a good time to start putting up some units. Luke. Certainly. Wait. What's up? I don't think I got Mr. Carthew's consent for a blood transfusion. You don't think? Actually, no. I didn't get consent. What, he refused? I forgot to ask him. It's standard procedure. I know. I somehow missed it. Livers bleed buckets. It's the major complication of a resection. It's a given that the patient will need a transfusion. I know. I'm sorry. I... Tell that to the patient. He now has to go through the stress of a second operation. I somehow missed it. Just get out of the way. I'll close. Here's a recent example of the impact poor communication during the consent process can have. Just this week, a surgeon neglected to complete the full consent record, and as a result, the surgery had to be stopped mid-procedure patient, man in his 60s, now has to undergo a second operation. Now, I don't think I need to spell out the added risk that outcome now poses. I thought it'd be useful to compare a selection of surgical consent forms from different hospitals. Uh, sorry, uh, won't be a minute. Technology's a wonderful thing when it works. <laughs> uh... No, I've, I've got it this time. Here, let me. Uh, no, 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 it's all right. I can do it. No, I can fix this. <laughs> well, that's a great improvement. M move over. No, you just need to reboot it and it'll be fine. <laughs> OK, while we wait for our technical experts to solve the problem, can I suggest we break for afternoon tea? Good idea. I need you here next week. No can do. Well, I've got no staff to cover for you, Finn. Unless... Hang on. Tico, 
so. Um, finesse to look after his kids next week. I'm on study leave next week. Yes, I know. I'm asking you to cut it down to two days. Yeah, I need the week of exams coming in. Oh, well, you fly through them. Come on, help Finn out. His wife's going in for surgery. Um, all right then. It's all yours. Cheers. Well, I'll sort the paperwork. That was easy. Push the escape button. I already have. Did you test run up before the seminar? I thought you wanted the afternoon tea at 2.30. Well, we've had a wee technical glitch. But nothing's coming up on the screen. Yes, because it's broken. <sighs> a good workman never blames his tools. Let me have a look. Oh, thanks. No, thanks, Yvonne. If you want to help, you can hand out some plates or something. Why don't you let me look at it first? Oh, Yvonne, what do you know? Daniel has walked me through the basics now. If you... Display menu into display mode. Change to. <laughs> there you go. Easy peasy. Well done, Avon. You saved the day. No problem. More coffee. Oh, please. <laughs> hey, I was thinking I might take a day off next week. I promise not to interrupt your study much, but I thought we could have a long lunch somewhere nice as a treat. Bad idea? Great idea, it's just I won't have time. You've got the whole week off. You'll need to take breaks. I've only got two days off. Finn needed the leave. His wife's having surgery. Oh, she'll only be having her lipo topped up. Yeah. Let me guess. Maxwell bargained you down. Emotional blackmail put the pressure on in front of Finn. All of the above. Yeah, I know. I gave him away too easily. Again? Yeah. He just knows I'm an easy mark. Every time. You wear coloured contacts, right? No. Well, your eyes. I've never seen that colour before. <laughs> Can you stop it, please? You're embarrassing me. <laughs> it's not you I'm trying to hit. <laughs> oh. You're going to have to try a better pickup line than that. Yes, thank you. And preferably when I am not around. Bye. <laughs> Look, it's Isaac, your only just ex-boyfriend. Let's invite him over. Let's not. I agree. Come on, look at him. He looks all sad. Because he did a major boo-boo today. Like what? He forgot to get surgical consent for a blood transfusion. Crikey, that's a bit basic. I know. I even asked him in front of the patient if he completed the consent, and he said yes. Oh, no wonder he's looking rough. We have to invite him over. No, we don't. I'm with her. Give the guy a break. He needs cheering up. He can look after himself. So will you be joining the ladies? I've had enough ridicule for one day. I thought you and Tons were... Mm, that bridge has just gone down in flames. Oh, I like a bit of new record. Mm, please don't. Oh, come on, how many weeks have been working at that hospital? You've already churned through how many nurses. You're making quite a reputation for yourself. Tell you what, I'll introduce you to some of my other patrons. Oh, no, not today. A man drinking alone isn't a good look for the bar, Isaac. Come meet Fiona. Oh, no, really. Fiona! She's a lawyer at one of the local firms. She's smart, funny, and knows nobody at the hospital. I introduce Isaac. He's a fine surgeon from Shorten Street. You are a meanie. He deserves to suffer. Hey, we all make mistakes, and we all need somebody to pat us on the back <sighs> at the end of the day. Can we just drop it, please? No, you are being silly. I'm going to invite him over. Oh, uh, no, he found someone to pat him on the back already. See? I told you. Isaac knows how to look after himself. And we were we. Something about my eyes. Mm. Please. I'll get another round first. My pickup lines work better after a few. <laughs> Mrs. Scanlon, has she been seen by the med reg yet? Uh, Scanlon, Scanlon. Um... I referred her from the PCC, lower left lobe pneumonia. Ah, yes. Uh, she's already gone to ward. Thanks. Hey, how about I cook dinner tonight? I'm working late. Uh, about my study leave. What about it? I've reconsidered. Uh, I asked for a week, you gave it. I want it back. Well, I've already told Finn you can have the time. You were there. Well, you just have to find some other way around it. Oh, come on, you can't suddenly just change your mind yeah, like I'm this. I'm not prepared to jeopardize my part ones. They're important to me, and they should be important to you. Fine. Thank you. Yes, he is in, Mr. Moore. Let me just transfer you through. Take a message, please, Libby. 
Mr. Moore, are you there? Oops. I've assessed each of their performances based not only on their job descriptions, but my own criteria. OK, OK. Cut to the chase. Who's for the chop? As our most expensive employee, Libby is my first choice. Gerald would easily be able to step into her role with a more modest pay rise. It's a twofold one. It's taken you how long to work this out? You asked me to cut to the chase. That's the bottom line. Well, it's not going to happen. Libby is worth every cent we pay her. This is my decision, remember? And the hospital's paying for her MBA, and she'll probably leave anyway once that's completed. I disagree. She would rather move into a higher admin position than leave. You want to get that in writing? No need to. Libby is invaluable. She stays. Then it's a no-brainer. Gerald is our most flexible admin officer, so I'll be offering the redundancy package to Yvonne. My day is seriously starting to suck and I've had a gutful, so here's what I propose. Just hear me out. OK. I'll organise another overseas conference, one where I will present a paper. You can compile some of your COPD research into a paper and we can attend the conference together. That sounds great. Mm. Assuming we can find a conference that wants both our specialties. No, you leave that to me. It would be really nice to travel together. It'll be really nice to leave the uh, Vegas issue behind us. Yeah, it would be. Have we? Just... Please don't hold stuff back from me. I'm always going to worry. You can't expect me not to. And whether you're in control of it or not, this is still an addiction and it's something that I don't understand. So you're going to have to be honest with me or I'm probably going to overreact. I, I know I can't just expect you to trust me. I have to earn that and that's fair enough. Thank you. So we're all good. Arguments over. Issues resolved. We can go on holiday. I mean, work trip. <laughs> if you can get it past Rachel, yes. You just watch me. Come here. Mm. See, this is better. Yeah. <laughs> You're having to work late tonight. Is that the truth or you're in a snip? It's the truth. But how about I let you shout me dinner tomorrow night? You're on. <laughs> and where is the lovely Fiona gone? She had something else to go to. Meaning you blew it. She seemed nice, we just didn't really click. Yeah, probably because you told her how you mucked up in theatre. And you were listening. Oh, well, you need all the help you can get. But if at first we don't succeed... Mate, honestly, contrary to popular rumour, I'm not a playboy. Really? Really. Well, good for you. Good luck living down the room. <laughs> On the house. Oh! Yes, please, if you're giving it away. Ah, it depends, big man. You had one of the worst days of your existence. Well, you know, uh, it was looking that way for a while, but back on track now. Ah, sorry. <sighs> Damn, honestly, never pays, eh? So, what are we up to tonight, boys? Well, I'm working, but this boy needs all the help he can get. He's looking out all over the place. Well, how's time we change that? I could do with a distraction. Oh, you stick with me, buddy boy. We'll hit the big city and have ourselves some fun. Ah, cheers. So, it seems this old dog can learn a new trick or two after all. Yes, it was very fortuitous that you were there. Honestly, I nearly didn't take Daniel's checklist. But he insisted and I felt bad, you know. All that work he'd put into it for me. I can't wait to tell him. Mm, I bet. And, oh, look at the time. Time for your break. Oh, so it is. I'll give him a quick call. Mm, you do that. Oh, I may as well hand in my resignation now. I deserve to get the boot after that embarrassing performance. It's not you that's getting fired. What? How do you know? I overheard Callum and Rachel. Couldn't stop myself. Oh, well? Well, I can't say. I might lose my job. Damn! Oh, poor Yvonne. That'll be the second time she's been fired this week. What? Well, after Ruben dumped her as stage manager. They're hardly on the same scale, Gerald. <sighs> well, all right. Well, at least we promoted a director. That should ease the pain a little bit. <sighs> she's going to be unemployed. How are you going to ease that pain? We need to save a job. Well, what do you propose? What, you don't think I should step down? No. Well, then why are you looking at me like that? I'm just thinking hard, Gerald, and I could do some help, please. Kick back, make yourself at home. Done. You want a drink while you wait? Well, if it's Chris's single malt you're offering. I'm sure he won't mind. <laughs> well, too bad if he does. 
Maxwell, to what do we owe the pleasure? I thought I'd take your cousin out for a few quiet drinks. What's up? Hey, Doc. <laughs> do you mind if Dad goes out for a couple of hours? We'll get the nanny in. Pay for the nanny. Thanks, but this rat bag still has homework to do. We're in for the long haul. Are you sure we're going to hit this? No, don't pressure the man. No, he's being a responsible parent. You guys have a good one. Might as well go out, Dad. Homework's a waste of time. That's what all the research says. Tough. You're still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> now, where's that scotch? We're still going to the centre, right? Yeah, I just didn't want to say anything in front of Chris. My girlfriend Sarah doesn't approve of gambling. Ah. Yeah, so I'd rather keep our little jaunt to the casino between us and the blackjack table. Gotcha. My lips are sealed. Ah, you can stay on. Do we need to readdress the conference leave issue after the hoo-ha this week? Well, in a memo, perhaps, but I don't think we need to rehash it at an HOD meeting. OK. Anything else you want to add to the agenda? Um, come in. Sorry to interrupt. The administrative meeting's not for half an hour. We're aware of that. So come back in half an hour. We're busy. Sorry, but we need to say what we're going to say now, before the meeting. For heaven's sake. We know that you're planning on firing Yvonne. And how exactly do you know that? I overheard you. It was an innocent mistake. I was transferring through a call and you left a speakerphone on. You had no right to listen into that conversation. And absolutely no right to pass on confidential information to other staff members. No, she didn't. But given that you were going to give them the information anyway... OK. Now you've spoilt my surprise. You can breathe easy. No, we can't. I'm beginning to lose my patience. If you fire Yvonne, then Gerald and I have no other choice but to resign as well. That's right. If Yvonne goes, then we all go. OK, fine. Sorry? I'm accepting your resignation. Put something in writing. Email's fine. 